Just giving my old mate Ken Hinkley a call to talk about dosing trace elements. And they see it and someone's ringing. Sam Parker's ringing me right now. I don't know who Sam is, but he's ringing right now. So, But I love the bow and arrow, and Sam will call you back later. Can I remind me later? Sorry, Sam. All right, seems like Ken doesn't want to talk about trace elements, but you and I can. All right, hi Reefers, Sam Parker here. Just uh, gonna run through an episode today on uh, one of the biggest changes that I ever made to my tank and that was uh, dosing trace elements. Take you back about six years ago now when um, I first set up my tank and it uh, was this big glass box of um, water and rock and sand and I started putting a couple of corals in there and believe it or not, after a few months, things started to grow. And once they started to grow, they started consuming alkalinity and calcium and magnesium. And they were consuming those elements to uh, build their skeletons and grow and uh, become bigger and start to fill out that glass box. Now, believe it or not, it was news to me at the time, but uh, turns out those corals don't just consume uh, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, but they also consume these things called trace elements. What are trace elements? Trace elements are all those other bits from the periodic table that go into growing coral. Now, at that point in time, I was just dosing my tank what I would call sterile uh, macro elements. So I was dosing alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium, which is great. They're the cornerstones of the uh, coral reef. However, they weren't supplying everything my tank was needing. Um, all those other trace elements were only being supplemented via water changes, and it just wasn't keeping up with demand. And as a result, my coral growth was just choked a little bit, and we weren't getting the results that uh, I was really looking for. At that point in time, uh, I actually put a calcium reactor onto my tank, which saw a dramatic increase in the coloration and growth of my corals. Now, at the time, I put that down to having a balanced and stable levels of alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. However, now, well, that was one year into having the tank, so five years ago now, I can look back and realize that that was because the calcium reactor was adding these things called trace elements. Now, fast forward a couple of years from there, and uh, my tank's discoloration and growth is off the charts, and my calcium reactor, while still doing a good job supplying those macro elements and some trace elements, starts to not keep up with the trace element demand as well. And that's because the calcium reactor really only melts down coral skeleton, and you know, skeleton is dead coral. It's not live coral, so whilst it does, the skeleton does contain a lot of the uh, trace elements, it doesn't contain everything, or it doesn't contain enough because we've lost a lot of the um, flesh and a lot of the other parts of the skeleton of the coral, living coral as well. So at that point in time, I came across these guys out of Australia called uh, Coral Essentials, and they uh, actually ran a coral farm up in Cairns um, called Sustainable Reefs, they're the same company. Um, Sustainable Reefs is their coral uh, farm, and Coral Essentials is their uh, trace element package. So. I had a chat with uh, Rick and Christian and uh, started to understand the trace element needs and I got onto their uh, trace elements ABC. So we've got uh, three bottles here and that's the uh, trace elements packaged into um, the different elements that can combine with each other. Um, obviously, we, they can't just put all these elements in one bottle because the, um, the different chemicals don't play so nicely together. Plus then it would also be hard to dial in the amounts. So. All good and well, I've now got bottles of these trace elements, but how do I know how much to add? Um, every trace element package out there has got a uh, sort of a baseline suggestion of, you know, so many drops or so many milliliters per 100 liters that your tank volume is. But in reality, that's a pretty inaccurate measure because um, I can have a thousand liter tank with um, one frag in there, or I can have a uh, 200 liter tank with a couple of huge colonies in there. So. Your trace element uh, requirements are going to vary from tank to tank. So I want to spend today talking about how you can work out and how you can dial in your ICP results, uh, your trace element dosing, and just get the best results for your tank. All right, so that's enough of a history on uh, my tank and its uh, journey with trace elements, and especially the uh, Coral Essentials range. But uh, how are we going to get dosing uh, trace elements into your tank? Well, I've got uh, three methods for which uh, you can have a look and see which one's going to work for you. Method number one is the way I go, and that's uh, because I've got my tank fairly automated. Um, there's not that much I have to do on it, which um, I know, first world problems, but uh, one thing I like to do each day is uh, grab my uh, caddy of uh, Coral Essentials items, go around the tank and uh, dose the required elements that um, my tank is needing at that point in time. So I actually like to use the bottles and uh, count the drops each morning. Now, I recognize that doesn't work for everyone, but it uh, works for me. And I do that in conjunction with ICP testing. So I do an ICP test every, 
was going to say every three months, but realistically, probably every four to six months, just to make sure that um, the uptake of these elements hasn't changed too much. And you'll notice um, I make little notes, like on this one it says 12 drops because uh, this is a trace A, and I was a bit low in um, strontium and barium, so I just went one and a half times the dosage on that just to bring it up, and then on the next ICP I'll reevaluate and see where we're at. So the Coral Essentials range is pretty basic. They have the um, the standard amount, like I touched on before, of how many drops per 100 liters at tank. Obviously, you're gonna have to dial that in with some ICP testing yourself. Now, because I run a calcium reactor, I find that I'm already getting some of my uh, trace element needs. So whilst I would need normally need to drop uh, 10 drops of each into my tank, I've got a different amount for each of mine. And I find some of them are around seven drops each day and others like um, trace A at 12 drops per day. So it just varies a little bit and that's um, come from a few years of dialing it in with ICP testing. Now, if counting drops in your tank with three or more bottles a day isn't for you, don't worry, we've got another option. Okay, so if you don't have a calcium reactor and you're a big dosing fan, so you've got dosing pumps all set up and you're already dosing something like Randy's recipe, and the last thing you wanna do is go and grab bottles and manually drop them in because you know that's why you add added dosing pumps in the first place. You just wanna set these things up to take care of themselves. Well, good news because uh, the trace ABC can be added to your alkalinity and calcium mixes. Now, the instructions for this are that uh, for calcium, depending on the strength of calcium, there's two different strengths of calcium. If you're at 18 and a half thousand ppm, you can add trace A and B at 0.37 mil per liter of solution. Now that's, that's how strong this stuff is. So when you're mixing up uh, your uh, Randy's calcium, you can add 0.37 mil per liters um, of A and B to the calcium mix. Now, if you're running a double dilution strength, obviously you just double that uh, the trace element dosage. So you'd be at 0.74 milliliter per uh, liter of solution that you would add of uh, the essentials A and B. Now don't forget about C. C can be mixed in with your alkalinity mix. And again, there's two different strengths. So if you're at 47,000 ppm of your alkalinity mix, you need to add 0.94 of a milliliter per solution of trace C. I'm gonna call that close enough to one mil because um, <laughs> the 0.94 is just uh, getting a little bit uh, precise for me, but that's okay. And again, if you're at double that strength, if you're at 95,000 ppm, just add two mil per uh, liter of solution of trace C and you're good to go. So if you're already dosing, why are you dosing pumps, your alkalinity and calcium and magnesium mix, you can simply grab these bottles, add it to your alk and calcium mix, give it a good stir up. That way when you're Corals are consuming and you basically just have to keep monitoring your alkalinity and calcium levels. Your trace elements are going to be consumed at that same rate. Give or take, obviously it's not an exact science because it's coral keeping after all, but it's a really good baseline and if you combine that with a bit of ICP testing every now and then, you'll be on a fast track to great success. All right, now last but not least, if you're one of those people that uh, doesn't like calcium reactors, you do dose alkalinity magnesium, but you're a little more uh, pedantic or a bit finicky about it and you don't want to combine your trace elements in with your alkalinity and calcium mixes. You wanna have that more fine level control but you still don't wanna do drops each day. It's all good, we got you covered. Basically, all you need to do is dilute these bottles with RODI. Now these are trace element bottles, their AB, Coral Essentials ABC range can be diluted with water. So you get your- Okay, so once you've jumped onto the uh, Coral Essentials website and you've uh, finished admiring that beautiful uh, display tank in the background of uh, their website, hopefully it looks familiar to some of our viewers, you're gonna wanna head over to the um, FAQ section of the website up here. And uh, once the FAQ section loads, you'll see they've got quite a lot of questions and answers here, which is uh, pretty handy for uh, users of the system. But if we scroll down, we'll find this section here, which is, can I put tracing elements on a dosing pump? Thankfully for uh, you OCD guys out there, you can, and it's quite easy. Basically what you need to do is grab 950 milliliters of RODI water and dump the 50 ml bottle of trace elements into there. Give it a good mix, and then that'll give you a solution that you can dose with. The recommended dosing rate for low SPS stock tanks is half a mil of that solution per 100 liters a day. So if you've got yourself a 500 liter tank with not a lot of SPS in it, you'd dose 2.5 mil of each of those ABCs into your tank a day. Now, if you've got a medium stocked SPS tank and uh, you're wanting to dose this mixture into it, you're gonna up that dosage a little bit. So we're up to one mil per 100 liters. So if you've got a 500 liter tank, you're gonna dose five mil of this uh, solution a day and uh, you're good to go. Again, this is a baseline. 
And finally, if you've got a tank with a high SPS load, you've got to double that again. So you're up to two mil per day. So imagine it's a 500 liter tank, we're up to 10 milliliters of each of these solutions a day. Again, this is just a baseline, but it gets you somewhere to start. Always check against ICP testing. All right, hopefully that's demystified a little bit of uh, trace elements and how some of the different techniques you can go about dosing these things. We've got um, all sorts of different ways of doing it. If you want to count drops each day, you can do that. That's not a problem at all. If you want to just add it into your two-part dosing, you can do that as well. And finally, if you want to make up your own little dosing solution so you can dose them independently of your two-part, you can do that as well. But uh, that's about all I've got for today's video. Um, if you're in Australia and you're heading to reef stock this weekend, I'll be at the Coral Essential stand. So feel free to come and have a chat to me about uh, how you can best go about dosing your trace elements. I'll be there all weekend. So um, I'll be keen to see some of you guys and uh, have a chat about how we can get uh, your tank going from some of those pictures of mine in the early stages up to where it is now. So um, other than that, if you have any questions, be sure to pop them in the uh, comment section below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a like, a thumbs up. And uh, finally, if you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. Thanks guys, see you later.